Now walk down just about any street in the East Midlands and chances are you'll see graffiti scribbled on a wall or sprayed on an underpass. It seems that nowhere is off limits. Today it's the subject of a conference in Nottingham attended by those involved in graffiti prevention and removal. But for some it's a legitimate art form that deserves recognition. Our crime correspondent Phil Brewster investigates. Love it or loathe it, graffiti is a feature of every town and city across Britain. From tiny scrawls to full-blown wall art, it seems for some our streets are nothing more than a blank canvas. In Leicester, they're only too aware of the size of the task facing them. Every day, council teams are out on the streets erasing graffiti, only for it to return, often within a matter of hours. Spray paint, marker pen, road marking, paint, any, whatever they can get hold of. They'll spray graffiti with. And this is what they're up against. This footage was confiscated from two teenagers who decided to make their mark underneath the flyover in Nottingham. They'd filmed themselves in the act with the intention of putting the material on the internet. Others are more prolific. This is Dominic Clark, a.k.a. Smokey, captured on CCTV cameras in Nottingham, spraying his tag on a wall. This was just one of hundreds of sites across the city where he'd left his calling card. The cost to local authorities of removing graffiti is huge. Last year alone, city councils across the East Midlands spent just over £700,000 cleaning up where the graffiti artists had struck. In many cases, graffiti is the result of bored children looking to make their mark. In Mansfield, they've decided restorative justice is the best way of tackling the problem. Anyone caught graffitiing illegally has the choice of paying an £80 fine or cleaning up their own mess instead. If we made them pay the fine, it would be the parents that picked up the, you know, the, the cost, and that's not, not the idea. The idea isn't to sort of punish the parent, it's to get the message across to the young person. And I think doing the work makes that happen. Has it made you stop doing it again in the future? Then? Yeah, I've done it since, since I did it, since I graffiti cleaned. And you're not going to do it anymore then? No. Other councils have turned to companies like Dacrelate at Kirkby and Ashfield in Nottinghamshire. They've manufactured a product designed to deter the graffiti artists. Graffiti and the effects of graffiti on public buildings and the amount of money that's costing to local authorities up and around the country is it's a, it's a problem, that's a growing menace. Now normally removing graffiti like this would take hours involving a lot of chemicals and a lot of scrubbing. But because this wall has been treated with a special anti-graffiti paint, it makes the whole process of removing the graffiti much quicker. <laughs> Three minutes blasting and it's gone. But one man's eye saw is another's Picasso. Darren Reynolds from Derby is a practicing graffiti artist of 20 years with a degree in fine art. As well as private commissions, Darren does a lot of projects and workshops with youth groups. He says it's vital children have an outlet to express themselves. I'm not saying that it will, will cure the problem, but I think if the spots that they were all there and they was all taken away, I think then there'd be an upsurge you know, in, in graffiti throughout again. Mm. They'd have to sort of like, because they're not going to stop what they love. It becomes part of you. And there are now places where graffiti is allowed. Many councils are now setting aside special areas for artists to come and express themselves legally. This site in Nottingham has been visited by graffiti artists from around the world. And there are increasing signs graffiti is going mainstream. These images are the works of Banksy, a graffiti artist who's made a name for himself by stenciling provocative images around the streets of London. Much of his work's what's dubbed street art, but his canvas work is highly prized. One piece sold recently for just under a million pounds. Where's the line drawn? Who draws the line? And, and more importantly, who polices the line? It's a, it's a very, very difficult uh, question. But it's that kind of controversy, of course, that makes contemporary art so exciting. For some, graffiti will never be anything more than vandalism, an eyesore that shouldn't be tolerated. But for others, it's a legitimate art form that deserves its place in society. It's not just all about the tagging and, and the vandalising side of it. There's a lot more in-depth you know, subject matter really going into what these young people are doing. And I think it needs to be looked at really before they sort of throw the book at it. Bill Brewster for Central Tonight.
I think there's a big difference, isn't there, between the big works of art, graffiti, yes. and the Steve and Samina was here. Type. Yes, I know. We don't <laughs> approve of that, do we? But we like the art. <laughs>